Welcome to the 49th video of Bangkok Unmasked, the YouTube channel that helps you get the most out of your visit to Bangkok City. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. In this video, I'm going to let you know when 21 popular Thai fruits are in season. This is useful information to know, as most Thai fruits taste way better when they're in season. Note, you can get most of the 21 fruits all year round. However, if fruit in Thailand is sold out of season, it will likely be grown under artificial conditions and more pesticides will have to be used. I'm going to include the Thai script for the names, so you can copy them down and request the fruit at your local fruit store. The quality and availability of fresh fruit is something that most visitors love about Thailand. Sitting on a beach or by the swimming pool with a fresh coconut is heaven. Mango and sticky rice for dessert is even better. Unfortunately, a good number of visitors don't get beyond mangoes and coconuts, and perhaps a bit of papaya or dragon fruit from their hotel's buffet. Let's get started. Number one, Rambutan. Thai language, ngo. Thai fruit season, May through September. If you have the chance to eat this fruit in season, you must try it. Some people say that the flavour is between that of an apricot and pineapple. In my opinion, Rambutan tastes more like a dry, but not dried, lychee, with little to no juice. This crazy looking fruit is native to the Malay Peninsula and has been around since prehistoric times. Rambutan can be peeled with a simple thumb squeeze to reveal its white fruit inside. As with many other Thai fruits, be careful not to swallow the large seed in the centre of the fruit. Number two, dragon fruit. Thai language, Gel Mangon. Thai fruit season, year round. Dragon fruit doesn't have much taste. The best way I can describe it is similar to a white kiwi in terms of both consistency and flavour. It's usually not very sweet and tends to be somewhat bland, though crunchy due to the many black seeds. Dragon fruit is actually a type of cactus. The fruit comes in three colours. Two have a pink skin, but with different coloured flesh, one white, the other red. The other type has a yellow skin with white flesh. When ripe enough, the skin is easily torn apart. Otherwise, slice lengthways and squeeze the fruit from its skin. Number three, durian. Thai language, durian. Thai fruit season, April through August. Durian is dubbed the king of fruits by many people in Southeast Asia. When ripe, it stinks. Really, really stinks. Even when my wife puts durian in Tupperware, it still makes the fridge stink. Food writer Richard Sterling was bang on the money when he wrote, I quote, its odour is best described as turpentine and onions, garnished with a gym sock, end quote. The late Anthony Bourdain wrote, quote, indescribable, something you will either love or despise. Your breath will smell as if you've been French kissing your dead grandmother, end quote. Once you get past the smell, the taste will not be as expected. Durian is a strange combination of savoury, sweet and creamy all at once. Durian is supposed to have subtle hints of chives mixed with powdered sugar. To me it tastes like diced garlic and caramel poured into whipped cream. Durian comes in many different varieties, with Mon Tong, Kan Yao and Jani being the most commonly purchased. The fruit is housed in a hugely stalked, pendulous skin and the fruit is seated in a capsule that is split into three to five segments. Each segment contains one to five seeds, each of which is embedded in a sweet, rich and creamy pulp. Number four, jackfruit. Thai language, kanun. Thai fruit season, year round. When ripe, the jackfruit's taste is comparable to pear, pineapple, banana and papaya. It's a very filling fruit. Note, I must warn you not to eat too much of it as it really makes your throat dry and scratchy. Jackfruit is found widely throughout Thailand. Enormous and prickly on the outside, jackfruit can be huge with a very thick skin. They look somewhat like durian, though much larger. I've heard that jackfruit can reach 36 kilos in weight and up to 90 centimetres long. Once the jackfruit is cracked open, what you'll find inside are pods or bulbs, often referred to as the seeds. These bulbs are actually a kind of fleshy covering for the true seeds or pits which are round and dark like chestnuts. The fleshy part, the bulb, can be eaten, as is, or cut up and cooked. When unripe, green, 
It is remarkably similar in texture to chicken, making jackfruit an excellent vegetarian substitute for meat. In fact, canned jackfruit, in brine, is sometimes referred to as vegetable meat. I wouldn't try to open up a jackfruit yourself, as it's a very labour-intensive task to extract the fruit. Buy packaged jackfruit at the market instead. Number five, custard apple. Thai language, noi na. Thai fruit season, June through September. The taste of a custard apple has been described as like sweet custard mixed with cooked apple or pear flesh. The flesh closest to the skin can be a little bitter, as is the central spine, so avoid these areas if you prefer sweeter fruit. Custard apple is grown everywhere in Thailand and easy to come by at lo local stalls. To eat, divide the fruit into two with your hands and scoop out the soft pulpy flesh with a spoon. Number six, mango steam. Thai language, mankut. Thai fruit season, May through September. Mango is seen as a must eat fruit in Thailand. The flavour is a combination of strawberry, peach, and vanilla ice cream. The white flesh is very sweet with a very slight tartness. Note, the tartness is caused by the thick skin that tightly encases the fruit. Mango steen is known in Thailand as the queen of fruits due to its extensive health benefits. The purple skin is best removed by making an incision down the middle and parting with your fingers to reveal the snow white flesh. Larger segments will likely contain seeds that cannot be eaten. Number seven, mango. Thai language, mamwon. Thai fruit season, April through June. Mangoes are generally sweet, although the taste and texture of the flesh differs across varieties. Some have a soft pulpy texture similar to an overripe plum while others are firmer, like a cantaloupe or avocado. You might encounter some mangoes with a fibrous texture. Mangoes are delicious eaten alone. That said, you must try a popular Thai dessert, mango and sticky rice, soaked in coconut cream. When the dessert is prepared right, it's almost a religious experience. I kid you not. To skin a mango, carve the skin lengthways and chop into squares. When chopping, cut closely to the big seed in the middle of the fruit. Number eight, pomelo. Thai language, somo. Thailand fruit season, August through November. Pomelo is another must-eat fruit in Thailand. It tastes exactly like grapefruit, but without the bitterness or sour notes. It's not particularly sweet, nor is it tart. Like grapefruit, you'll find pomelo in both pink and yellow varieties. Most fruit sellers will have their pomelo ready peeled and packaged. The reason is that it's a nightmare to peel. The green outer skin and white pith surrounding the fruit is extremely thick and it's quite an ordeal removing the fruit from its casing. Number nine, rose apple. Thai language, shampoo. Thailand fruit season, year round. This is one of my favorite fruits in Thailand. Rose apple both smells and tastes mildly of roses, but not in an unpleasant way. The overall flavour is only mildly sweet as the fruit has a high water content. Perfect for a hot day, the texture, although not as substantial as a true apple, is somewhat reminiscent of one. To eat, simply cut through the skin as you would an apple and remove the hard core. Number 10, papaya. Thai language, malagor. Thailand fruit season, year round. Papaya's taste is often compared to that of a melon, but less sweet and with a softer texture. Sometimes papaya can have a distinct smell, often described as a feet smell with little to no flavour. Typically, this means that the fruit is not ripe. To get the full flavour of a papaya, it must be very ripe. Papaya is commonly found at breakfast buffets all over Thailand, not to mention pretty much every street food stall. The green unripe type is used for the famous Som Tam dish, Thai papaya salad. To eat, simply skin this delicious fruit and remove all the seeds from the centre. Number 11, guava. Thai language, furang. Thailand fruit season, year round. Guava has a mild taste. It's something like a combination of a pear and a strawberry. The pulp of the fruit may be sweet or sour, depending on the ripeness. Guava is super refreshing and best eaten when crisp on the outside and medium soft on the inside. Note, it's stacked with vitamin C, so a great option if you're feeling under the weather. Number 12, pineapple. Thai language, sapalot. Thailand fruit season, April through June and December through January. 
When fully ripe, Thai pineapple is extremely sweet and succulent with a soft, fragrant pulp. Many Thai will add a sprinkle of salt to temper the fruit's bite, a technique also used to prolong its shelf life. Best practice cutting requires that you first twist off the leafy crown, then cut off the skin at the bottom. Place on a chopping board and slice off the skin, ensuring that you cut deep enough to take out off the eyes too. Number 13, Sapodilla. Thai language, Lamut. Thailand fruit season, September through December. The taste of sapodilla is something like brown sugar and butter, with an additional hint of pear thrown in. In Thailand, sapodilla is commonly grown fruit and a favourite of farmers because it's so resistant to moles and insects. Often they don't have to bother with chemical pesticides and fungicides. The fruit looks like a small potato and varies in size from 1.5 to four inches in diameter. You'll know that the fruit is ready to eat when it's as soft as a very ripe kiwi fruit, giving easily to pressure. When it's ripe, the inside flesh should be dark brown. You'll usually find four bean-shaped black seeds inside. To eat, cut in half and squeeze the fruit free of the skin, or carefully peel with a knife. Note, mind the hard seeds. Number 14, watermelon, Thai language, Deng Mo, Thailand fruit season, year round. Thai watermelon is sweet and fruity, but not strong tasting due to the high water content. It's best eaten chilled after you've been working out or outside on a very hot day. Thai watermelon generally has a dark green appearance. That said, it can also come in a yellow variety, which is not as sweet, but just as refreshing. To eat, slice lengthways from the stalk and cut into sections. Then, pass the blade of your knife between the skin and fruit. You'll need to pick out those tam seeds, one of the main reasons why I don't often eat watermelon. Number 15, uh, lychee, Thai language, linji. Thai fruit season, April through June. The lychee is a perfect balance of sweet and tart. It has a light floral taste. Some say it's a grape rose, others, insist pear watermelon. If you haven't tried a lychee, this is a musty fruit in Thailand, especially when it's in season. Break open the easily removed pinkish red skin and you'll reveal the sweet white flesh. The skin of a lychee is easily removed by piercing it with your thumb. Note, be careful not to eat the seed in the middle of the fruit. Number 16, tangerine. Thai language, Songkel Wan. Thailand fruit season, September through February. The Thai tangerine is deceptive. Due to its green skin, it looks unripe. Trust me, it's not. Some kale one are sweet, really sweet. They're exactly like the tangerines you're familiar with, but the flavours are way, way more intense. If you want to make fresh juice, they're a perfect fruit. Note, the skin of Thai tangerines is somewhat tougher than other tangerines. You'll likely have trouble peeling them. If this is the case, cut lengthways from the stalk, and peel the skin with a knife. Number 17, Long Kong. Thai language, Long Kong. Thailand fruit season, July through September to October. The flesh of Long Kong has a musky sweet taste, which can be compared to the flavor of a grape. It's a tropical fruit grown mostly in Southern Thailand. Long Kong looks like, um, like a very small potato and contains a few seeds. Buying Long Kong, is something of a lottery. Sometimes you'll get a very sweet one, sometimes very sour. To eat, break open the skin by pressing lightly with your fingers and tear off in strips. Number 18, Long Gan, uh, Thai language Lam Yai, Thailand fruit season, June through August. The Long Gan has a flavour similar to its relative, the lychee. Some though compare its taste to the honeydew melon. The Long Gan has no acidity, or at least not the term your tongue will detect. As a fruit, it may be an acquired taste for you due to its um, distinct musty aftertaste, which is experienced with some varieties more than others. The easiest way to peel a longan is to make an incision with your thumbnail and tear away the rest of the skin. Carefully bite off the pulp with your teeth, avoiding the hard, inedible seed in the centre of the fruit. Number 19, small banana. Thai language, goi namwa. 
uh, Thailand fruit season year round. You have to try this variety of banana when you're in Thailand. Not quite as sweet as Goi Hom, the standard long sweet banana. Goi Nam Wa is um, similar. Is it similar, more filling cousin that makes for the perfect breakfast cereal accompaniment or a healthy on the go snack? Note, if you batter and fry Goi Nam Wa bananas, they're awesome. Add some honey and you've got one of the best desserts you'll ever eat. Number 20, snake fruit. Thai language, salar. Thai fruit season, year round. A properly ripened snake fruit is dry and crunchy, with a taste similar to bitter pineapple or jackfruit. The pulp is commonly eaten raw, but can also be used to make wine juices and candies. Snake fruit trees are covered in sharp spikes, so harvesting the fruits takes skill. You can open a snake fruit by pinching the tip to break the skin, then peeling against the grain of the scales. Inside is a hard, pale yellow pulp that breaks apart into three lobes, resembling large cloves of garlic. Number 21, Santol. Thai language, Graton. Thailand fruit season, April through August. Santol's other name, the cotton fruit, comes from its fluffy white edible portion surrounding the seed. Its texture is spongy and like a mango steam. The flesh never separated, separates from the seed entirely. Sucking the flesh emits a milky, creamy, sweetish juice, loved by most who try it. Offsetting the sweet juice are tart, floral, citrus and venous notes. If the fruit is not fully ripened, expect a bitter taste. The outer flesh is unexpectedly savoury, earthy and astringent, with some likening the flavour to basil or oregano. Few deny that the outer grassy tasting flesh is not nearly as succulent as the cottony portion of santol inside. The rind is quite sour, compelling some to dry it, grind or pickle it for use as a souring agent. Note, santol is often used as an ingredient in Thailand's infamous dish, som tam. Anyway, that's it for this video. Expect a new video next week. For all you techies out there, this video is shot on a Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and edited using Hitom Express. To check out details on arranging a bespoke Bangkok tour with experienced tour guides, please click on the link in this video's description section. Finally, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel through the button below. Also, I'd like to hear from you if you have any questions or comments regarding fruit in Thailand. Maybe you have some great suggestions that I missed. Please do reach out to me through the comments section of this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.